All right, so we are back, and today is a very fun one. I've been excited for this since I knew that my boy, the realist, was returning. That's right, Vidal Riley made his return to the boxing ring this weekend. And I know he is the realist. We don't expect a fake out of him, but I want to change his nickname for just one day to Vidal the Destroyer because this was an absolutely dominating performance. He walked down to the ring rapping his own lyrics. By the way, go cop his mixtape. I think it's out now. And he took out the broom and the dustpan and came out of there with a six round sweep. And although he was closer to getting that finish than I am to my own grandmother, damn, I really do miss Mima's biscuits and gravy. Woo! He still had a great performance, and I'm going to explain exactly why off a two-year layoff, having injury after injury, coming back to this performance means that 2022 is going to be the year that Vidal Riley puts the world on notice. Let me explain. This is what I've been waiting for, so no further ado. The breakdown... Let's go. All right, so right off rip, this is Vidal's first performance back in the UK with his dad in the corner, and that is a big key for this fight. The man that trained him since he was shorter than most attention spans on Generation Z. Y'all's phones be getting more finger action from the swipe than your girl does. I, I, I don't understand it. <laughs> This was the perfect way for Vidal to come back into the boxing ring after two years off. Not only someone that he trusts, but someone that can also bring the best out of him in front of that crowd on a big card. Couldn't have been any better. And as this fight started, there was no time to waste. Vidal wanted to put on a show for those people in the stands because he came out quick. He was showing great head movement, feints, and everything was starting off that jab. It's one of the biggest keys to Vidal's offense and something we're going to come back to later. And while it looks like a bit of a back and forth as soon as the fight starts, it's actually not, and it shows the skill of Vidal as he's parrying shots. He's reading and finding ways to counter, and he throws out that beautiful counter right hand, that pull right hand that he has such great timing on, and immediately lands a big shot. And not only that, he follows up by slipping under and banging the left hook over the top. You could see he was raring to go for this fight, and again, we talked about it in our interview, he wanted to put on a show. And you saw, even from those first exchanges, Vidal was the quicker fighter. He was the more composed fighter. He was the more balanced fighter. And all those things came to a head when you started to see his opponent lunging. And Vidal, again, picked up the read quickly of his opponent just slipping under the right hand. After he felt that first one, he didn't want to feel another one. And off that level change, he makes the read, steps back off the big right hand, the looping right hand and bangs the uppercut, wiggles the ears, the man falls to the ground, and Vidal has a knockdown on his hands right away. Of course, I was losing my fucking mind, just like I'm sure all you guys were. Hey, uppercut! Puts him down, I called it! And then not only does he knock the guy down, but he then turns around and gets creative with that same combination, that same look, the same feint, to draw out the reaction from his opponent, to change levels, duck under the right hand, except this time Vidal fakes the uppercut, then comes over the top of the right hand, and good lord, if it landed, it was lights out in Georgia. But it didn't, at least not cleanly, and we ended the round there. But because he didn't get the knockout there, because he didn't get the knockout this fight, I felt like it was one of the best things that could have happened to Vidal. Because as we moved on through rounds two, three, four, five, six, the entire fight, he just got more ring work. And we talk about it all the time. Can't get better at something you're just not doing. And Vidal, for two years, yes, he had the injuries. Yes, he had time off. And yes, he was sparring and getting rounds in in the sparring room. But it is different under the lights. And this was a big help for his career moving forward, the long run. And playing on that, not only does no one want to go the distance, Vidal obviously wanted to cash that 10K check from KSI. So... In rounds two, three, and four, he's trying to finish this guy, but he's having to use different variety in his shots. And you're seeing that with the feints, with the setups, him feinting up high with the jab, sticking it to the body, then coming across with the right hand. And just like I said in the intro, this time off will give you ring rust. And because of that, there were so many shots that just grazed the nose or just grazed the chin on the uppercut or just whizzed by the face with the left hook. Those are timing issues and distance measuring issues that just come with being in there more, just getting more rounds. So you saw that I'll miss some of those shots in this fight, but it's a great indication for the growth he's showing and the shots he's creating and picking based off what the opponent is doing, which let's be honest, after Vidal put that work on him in the first round wasn't much, but he was still finding ways to get off clean shots. And although they missed, in the future, they won't. And yes, of course, we have to talk about the fact that there were times where Vidal did overload on shots. There were times where he had some 
ill-advised and kind of high tell shots with the right hand over or the shifting weight left hooks that were pretty easy to see coming, but factor in that his opponent was stumbling around like a newborn giraffe after getting hit with some big shots, so yes, Vidal was looking for the finish, and also, if you guys watched this live, you guys did hear a familiar voice when Vidal did overthrow, and that was the voice of his dad in the corner. You hear him on the broadcast, back on the jab, back on the jab, 2-3-2. Two, Two, three, two. I know, I can't do a UK accent. I can only do bloody Irish. Fuck yous. But as soon as he heard instruction, he was back on the jab. He was back on the basics. And when I say Vidal's basics are clean and absolutely crisp, watch him double up his jab. Watch him triple up his jab. Watch him double feint the jab just to land the third. Or feint the jab, two, three, back to the double, then the two behind it. There was no wasted motion when he was working off that lead hand. When he stays within those confines and pops that jab, the world is his fucking oyster because every shot after is a setup shot that's thrown with balance and technique versus the single pot shot that sometimes he fell into. And all these things just made me more excited to see the next performance from Bradal because again, we got to see the good and some of the bad, but even the bad was honed in so quickly. And another thing I liked is even when we got into the later rounds, four, five, and six, and the opponent wasn't really offering any offense. In fact, he was just kind of there to be smacked like when your girl wears those booty shorts or yoga pants. <laughs> You can't help it. Consensually, of course. And I even heard the Sky Sports announcer saying, well, Vidal should be getting him out of here by this point. Well, it is a little tough when there's really no offense coming from the other direction, no openings to hit. You're basically just punching away at a moving target. And Vidal did exactly what he should have done. He stayed patient. He stayed behind his jab. He continued to dominate round after round. At that point, you're just working at variety. You're working at different ways to open up that guard. And you saw it. The body work from Vidal was there with the jab to the body. The high feint, the right hands to the body, working around the guard as well, trying to pull at that lead hand, bang the left hook over. All those things were there. It might not have been the performance that Vidal wanted. Obviously, he wanted that 10K. Obviously, he wanted the stoppage, but it was one that he needed. Not only the work that he got in, the ability to rack up rounds after being off for so long, but working on his offense, working on the variety. Pro boxing, especially early on, you're not going to get that kind of experience with a seasoned opponent like Vidal had. He could have taken the Tommy Fury route and fought the fucking grocery bagger at your local Ralph's or Walmart, but he decided to take on a veteran with 25 wins in his record. He might not have been the best boxer ever, but he was seasoned, and for a guy that's 4-0 coming off a two-year layoff, a 25-win seasoned vet is not something a lot of people would be chomping at the bit to get at, and Vidal went out there and made him look like an amateur. He had him dancing around like girls in the back of a music video. It was domination from start to finish. Pure class, pure dominance, a totality of variety creativity, shot selection, patience, poise, and ultimately a W. And again, like I said in the intro, this fight, going the full distance, will only lead to a more dangerous, dominant, and definitive Vidal Riley finishing up 2022. But you guys let me know what you think down below. What do you think of this performance? What are things in your mind you saw, good and bad, from Vidal Riley? I want to hear your voice. Let me know down below. But question I have as we leave off. Who does Vidal Riley fight next and how many times does he fight in 2022? I don't have those answers, but maybe I'll ask him myself when I see him soon. But if not, that's okay because we all know how this works and as the saying goes, guess we'll find out.